Hello everyone. On behalf of the Colorado Department of Revenue, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our SALT Parity Act webinar recording. My name is Jane and I will be your host for today's webinar. If you want to learn more about the SALT Parity Act, you have come to the right place. This webinar is designed to review what the SALT Parity Act is, what it does, and how it may impact qualified taxpayers. We will also provide an overview of how to submit the retroactive SALT Parity election for tax years 2018 through 2021, how to submit the SALT Parity election for tax years 2022 through 2025, and we will cover additional resources. This webinar recording will last approximately one hour. Now get your salt shakers ready because we're going to add some seasoning to taxes. In today's webinar, we will cover a brief overview of the Salt Parity Act's background and intended purpose, how it might impact qualified taxpayers, how to file the retroactive election for tax years 2018 through 2021, how to make the SALT parity election for 2022 through 2025, resources and tools available. We hope that this webinar will answer your questions about the SALT Parity Act, but we will also provide resources and tools so that you can find additional assistance if needed. The SALT Parity Act is new, so we want to provide as much information on it as we can for you. Our motto is to always help. Our mission is to promote voluntary compliance with tax laws through education, assistance, and customer service. Let's begin today's webinar by highlighting the department's family of websites and we'll show you where to find information related to the SALT Parity Act. The department's family of websites includes Your Colorado Life, our main website, tax.colorado.gov, and Revenue Online. While we will not be providing a detailed walkthrough of each of these sites today, since we will focus on the SALT Parity Act, each of these websites is helpful and provides a wealth of information if you ever have questions or need assistance. I'd also like to take a moment to highlight a few other places where you can keep up to date on what the Department of Revenue is doing. We're on LinkedIn. We have our YouTube channel, which has tutorials and walkthroughs. You can find us on Facebook and on Instagram, which has weekly tax tips, reminders, and helpful hints to make being voluntarily tax compliant so much easier. We've covered a lot of helpful information, so pass the SALT. Let's discuss what the SALT Parity Act is. There are two bills that are part of the SALT Parity Act, House Bill 21-1327 State and Local Tax Parity Act for Businesses, and Senate Bill 22-124, SALT Parity Act. Since the SALT Parity Act is a new change and the retroactive election period just began in September, we are making as much information available as it is developed. With that in mind, I'd like to show you how you can find the most up-to-date information related to the SALT Parity Act, and that would be on our website. Start at tax.colorado.gov, hover over or select Businesses from the blue menu bar, then select Business Income Tax. On the Business Income Tax landing page, Scroll down below the banner and you'll see several menu panels. Select the menu panel titled SALT Parity Act Election to get to the SALT Parity Act landing page. To access this website directly, you can also type in tax.colorado.gov forward slash SALT Parity Act Election in your web browser. 
This page will continue to be updated regularly throughout the periods covered by the SALT Parity Act, which is currently 2018 through 2025. Now, I would like to walk you through the SALT Parity Act website and show you how to get to our administrative portal, Revenue Online, since it plays a significant role in filing SALT Parity Act elections. To access the SALT Parity Act website, start at our homepage, tax.colorado.gov. Place your mouse over Businesses in the top blue menu bar, and then select Business Income Tax from the drop-down menu. On the next page, scroll down below the banner and in the Quick Links section, you will see several menu panels related to income taxes for businesses. Select the menu panel titled SALT Parity Act Election. On the SALT Parity Act Election landing page, we have a brief overview about the SALT Parity Act. On the left-hand side of the screen, there is a menu bar that is specific to information and options related to the SALT Parity Act, including information related to 2018 through 2021 and the retroactive SALT Parity Act composite reporting, specific information for partnership and shareholder members about the retroactive SALT Parity election, information for tax years 2022 through 2025, SALT Parity Act reporting for 2022 through 2025, partnership and shareholder specific information for SALT Parity elections for 2022, and what partnerships and S-corporations should do to prepare for SALT Parity Act elections. This SALT Parity Act election webpage will be updated frequently, so for the most up-to-date information on all things related to the SALT Parity Act, start here. Now, let's go over to Revenue Online for a brief moment. Revenue Online is an administration portal that you can use to access your account. And in order to file the retroactive SALT Parity Act election, you will need an active Revenue Online account. To access Revenue Online, we'll go back up to our blue menu bar, which is accessible from any page on our website, and we'll select Online Services. Scroll down below the banner and select Visit ROL in the Revenue Online or ROL menu panel. On the Revenue Online homepage, we see the login box on the right-hand side of the screen, which is where you can sign in to your Revenue Online account. Just above the login box, we see Dory, our Everwise Tax Owl. Dory, which stands for Department of Revenue Interactive, is an automated self-service chatbot that can help answer common taxpayer questions. To use Dory, select the bright orange owl at the top of the Revenue Online homepage, type your question in the chat box, and click the blue arrow or tap Enter on your keyboard. Since this is a SALT Parity Act webinar, let's type in SALT Parity and see what Dory brings back for us. Dory brought back a lot of information about how to find current and prior year tax forms, partnership-specific filing information, information about refunds associated with the SALT Parity Act, and a link to information about the retroactive SALT Parity Act election. If Dory is not giving you the information you are requesting, you can either shorten or rephrase your question. You can also select the hyperlink that says, if this did not answer your question, click here to let us know, to leave us feedback. 
Why did Colorado need to create the SALT Parity Act? Many states have enacted similar legislation since the signing of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act in December of 2017, which took effect for the following tax year, 2018. The Federal Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, or TCJA, placed a cap of $10,000 on the amount of state and local taxes, often referred to by the acronym of SALT for state and local taxes, that an individual can deduct on their federal taxes. This limitation, though, does not apply to C-corporations, as it applies to individual income tax. However, since businesses organized as pass-through entities, like S-corporations and partnerships, typically pass their income and tax liability through to the partner and member owners of the business entity, this limitation disproportionately affects pass-through entities. In order to reconcile the difference between state and local taxes for C-corporations and S-corporations or partnerships, and to remove the disparity created by the TCJA, Colorado enacted House Bill 21-1327, the State and Local Tax Parity Act for Businesses, which was signed on June 23rd of 2021. This act allows pass-through entities to elect to pay their state income tax at the entity level so that the pass-through entity can claim an unlimited deduction at the federal level for state and local taxes paid. This option only exists during the income tax years where there is a limitation on the deductions allowed to individuals under Section 164 of the Internal Revenue Code. In other words, this limitation only currently applies to the years covered by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which includes tax years 2018 through 2025. Well, that was a lot of legislative speak, so let's try to pull out the key details. The purpose of the first bill, House Bill 21-1327, the State and Local Tax Parity Act for Businesses, is to allow partnerships and S-corporations to make an election to pay Colorado income tax at the entity level so that they may claim a federal deduction for state income taxes above the $10,000 deduction limitation that applies to individuals. The purpose of the second bill, Senate Bill 22-124, the SALT Parity Act, is to make these provisions of the first bill retroactive to January 1st of 2018 if the pass-through entity makes the election for this retroactive provision between September 1st of 2023 and June 30th of 2024. This second bill, Senate Bill 22-124, has a second purpose as well, and that is to convert the state income tax deductions at the entity level created by the first bill, House Bill 21-1327, into a tax credit that is passed through to the partner or member owners of the pass-through entity. This credit is refundable and is equal to the owner's share of the tax that was imposed on the electing entity, less any add-back required for the qualified business income deduction. Please be advised that any other credits that result from the activities of an electing pass-through entity have to be passed through and claimed by the entity's owners so there aren't any credits that can be claimed by the entity to apply against the entity's tax liability. Again, an S-corporation or a partnership must make the retroactive election on or after September 1st of 2023 
but before July 1st of 2024, so by June 30th of 2024, in a composite amended tax return for all of the years for which the election is made. This composite amended return will be filed on behalf of the S Corporation or Partnership and the electing pass-through entity owners. This election is binding on all members. So, now that we know what SALT is, the question is, would you like some SALT? It has come to our attention that some people may not realize how the SALT parity election may impact taxpayers. And, since the SALT parity election is optional, you may be wondering, why should I do this extra work for my partnership or S corporation if I'm not required to do it? That is an excellent question, and the answer depends on whether any owning members or partners who are individuals, estates, or trusts encountered that limit of $10,000 for the state and local taxes deduction on their individual federal taxes. We understand that it will not make sense for every taxpayer to make either the retroactive or the prospective SALT Parity Act election. However, if you have a partnership or an S corporation, choosing the SALT Parity election may reduce the owning member's federal tax liability. As mentioned earlier, the election allowed by the SALT Parity Act is optional for partnerships and S corporations. However, once the election is made, it is binding on all members of the electing pass-through entity, and it is not revocable. The department developed the combined reporting mechanism to streamline the process of amending the previously filed returns. Instead of having the partnership or S corporation amend the DR-0106 partnership and S corporation tax returns and having individual owning members amend each of their previously filed returns, the best process we could devise was to have the electing entity file this one combined retroactive amended return for 2018 through 2021. This combined retroactive amended return must be completed between September 1st of 2023 and June 30th of 2024 and can only be filed through Revenue Online. There is an option to input the data directly into Revenue Online as well as an option to download a spreadsheet to complete and upload on Revenue Online. The benefit of downloading the spreadsheet is that it will have some pre-programmed validation for some of the input items. Instructions for the retroactive SALT election, as well as the template for the retroactive SALT parity elections, the spreadsheet, are available on the SALT Parity Act election website. When entering the tax year for the retroactive SALT Parity Act election, fiscal filers will enter the year in which the partnerships or S corporations tax year begins. Most of the information that the electing pass-through entity will need to submit the SALT Parity election should be readily available to the electing pass-through entity. However, some very important information may be needed from each member who is an individual, estate, or trust, and that information can be obtained via a declaration that the member completes and provides directly to the electing pass-through entity. The Colorado Department of Revenue created a declaration titled DR-1715 Partner or Shareholder Declaration for Qualified Business Income Deduction Addback Required for a Retroactive SALT Parity Act Election to help facilitate sharing the information that each electing partnership or S-corporation will need 
in order to file a SALT Parity Act election. This declaration is available on the SALT Parity Act election website. Again, the electing pass-through entity must submit one return on Revenue Online for all retroactive years combined, tax years 2018 through 2021. After the electing pass-through entity has filed the combined retroactive amended return, if a member needs to update any of their information, name, address, etc., they should contact the Colorado Department of Revenue's Taxpayer Services section within 30 days of the amended return's submission. Once the return and payment are submitted, there will be a 30-day hold on the return so that any updates can be made on the account. Once the return is reviewed, accepted, and processed, any retroactive refund checks will issue by paper check to the member or members at their mailing address on record. This is why it is important for each member to update their information after the return has been filed by the partnership or S corporation. The process will be different for tax years 2022 through 2025, and we'll cover that a little later in this webinar. The DR-1715 Partner or Shareholder Declaration for Qualified Business Income Deduction Addback required for a retroactive SALT Parity Act election, which we will call the Declaration, is not required but it is available to support the sharing of information between the partners or shareholders and the partnership or S corporation. One of the key pieces of information that is needed to file the retroactive SALT Parity Act election is each partner or member's qualified business income deduction add back. This can be listed on line one of the DR 1715 if the partnership does not already have this information for each member. This declaration can be used by members that are individuals, estates, or trusts, and should be returned to the partnership or S corporation, not to the Colorado Department of Revenue, prior to the filing of the retroactive SALT Parity Act election. If the taxpayer completing the DR-1715 is a member or partner of multiple electing pass-through entities, they should only disclose the QBI, or Qualified Business Income, add back to one electing entity if an add back is necessary. Please consult with a tax professional to determine the amount of QBI to disclose. Partners or shareholders who are corporations or partnerships do not need to complete this declaration. However, corporate and partnership partners should make sure that the electing pass-through entity has their current mailing address on file to avoid delays in receiving the refund of any resulting credit. Line 4 allows taxpayers who are completing the DR-1715 to cover all four years of the retroactive election on one form to help reduce the amount of paperwork that the entity receives. Where do we find this form? At this time, the DR-1715 can only be found on the SALT Parity Act Elections webpage. The second step to filing a retroactive SALT Parity Act election is to make sure that you have a Revenue Online account for the partnership or S corporation with the appropriate returns on file. The only option for filing the retroactive SALT Parity Act election is to use Revenue Online. If you do not have a Revenue Online account, 
you will need to create one before you can file the Retroactive Salt Parity Act election. If you need assistance in setting up a Business Revenue Online account, please see our video titled How to Set Up a Business Revenue Online Account, which can be found on our website and on our official YouTube channel. If you need additional assistance, don't forget that you can also reach out to our Taxpayer Services section using the information provided in the Resources section of this webinar. Before we begin on Revenue Online, let's discuss the two methods for submitting the information for each member of a qualifying partnership or S-corporation. These two methods are spreadsheet upload into the Revenue Online system or manual data entry into the Revenue Online system. There are a few differences between using the template and manually entering the information. There are different validation mechanisms in place for each option as well. Let's start by taking a look at the spreadsheet. You can download the template from the SALT Parity Act election webpage for 2018 through 2021. Go to tax.colorado.gov, hover over Businesses, select Business Income Tax, and then select the SALT Parity Act election menu panel. On the left-hand menu bar, Select Tax Years 2018 through 2021, which will take you to the landing page for the Retroactive SALT Parity Election for 2018 through 2021. From the landing page for Tax Years 2018 through 2021, you can select the Template for Retroactive SALT Parity Composite Reporting Return to download the Excel spreadsheet template. Once you open the spreadsheet, you'll see all the potential pieces of information to enter in the top, including the member's QBI, which can be collected from the DR-1715 Partner or Shareholder Declaration for Qualified Business Income Deduction Addback required for a retroactive SALT Parity Act election. At the bottom of the spreadsheet, there is a page called Information. The Information Sheet gives you details on which information should be included in each cell on the spreadsheet. There is also a Hidden Sheet at the bottom. If you have any members who live outside of the United States, you will need to unhide this sheet by right-clicking on the Information tab, then selecting Unhide, and selecting OK in the pop-up. This sheet, called Lookup Values Locked and Hidden, provides the three-character country code used by our system. Since these country codes are not necessarily the same three character codes used by the U.S. Postal Service, please use this list to enter the correct country code. We don't anticipate that many people will need this function, so we have the sheet set to hidden to prevent confusion. We have a few notes about best practices for the spreadsheet template. This form has been developed for data entry only. For the tax professionals, this is important. Please avoid any copy or paste functions for entering information into the spreadsheet, as that will cause the validation measures that are built into the spreadsheet to fail. In order to ensure the fewest errors in uploading the completed spreadsheets, please only enter your data manually. Changing, removing, or renaming columns or sheets will cause any of the validation mechanisms 
built into the spreadsheet to fail. Please use individual workbooks for each account. If you are a tax professional, we recommend starting with a fresh template downloaded for each partnership or S-corporation whose returns you are compiling in order to prevent any data cleanliness or transfer issues. Once you have all the required DR-1715 declarations, what do you do next to file the retroactive SALT Parity Act election? Let's walk through filing a retroactive SALT Parity election for tax years 2018 through 2021. The examples presented in this video involve fictional taxpayers and are provided for illustration purposes only. In order to file a retroactive SALT Parity Act election, your partnership or S corporation will need to log in to your Revenue Online account. To access your Revenue Online account, you can start on our website at tax.colorado.gov. Select Online Services in the top menu bar, and then select Visit ROL from the Revenue Online menu panel. You can also go directly to colorado.gov forward slash Revenue Online. Once you arrive on the Revenue Online homepage, enter your username and password and select Log In. If prompted, enter the security code sent to you for the multi-factor authentication security measure. If you are on a trusted device, you can select the box next to Trust This Device to reduce the number of times that you are asked to enter the security code. Once you have entered your code, select Confirm. On your account landing page, you may see an option to file a SALT Parity Act election in the top menu panel since this box will show the action with the next upcoming due date. However, the most reliable method of locating the SALT Parity Act election is to select the link File or Amend and View Returns or Payments in the Account menu tile. The next page will show all of the returns available for the account. This is very important information since you can only file a retroactive SALT Parity Act election for 2018 through 2021 if the tax return for each year was already filed. You can tell that a return was filed because the Actions to be taken column will show View or Amend Return instead of File Now. In this example, we see that we have returns filed in 2018 and 2019, but no return filed in 2020 and 2021, which means that we can only file the SALT Parity Act election for 2018 and 2019. If we need to include tax years 2020 and 2021, we would need to file those returns first and then, once those returns have been fully processed, return to Revenue Online to submit our combined composite retroactive SALT Parity Act election for all tax years from 2018 through 2021. For our example, we are only filing the retroactive SALT Parity Act election for tax years 2018 and 2019. When we are ready to begin our composite retroactive SALT Parity Act election, we can select the link File Now next to the retroactive SALT Parity Act return for December 31st of 2023 which is the date that will show for the Retroactive SALT Parity Act election for 2018 through 2021. On the next page, we'll see the purpose 
eligibility requirements, and information necessary for filing the retroactive SALT Parity Act election. Please review this information before proceeding. We also have a link to the complete instructions for filing this retroactive composite amended return in the upper right-hand corner of the box titled Information Needed to Continue. Once we are certain that we want to file this composite return, we are eligible, and we have the information required, select Next at the bottom of the screen. On the page titled Add Partnership Member, we have the option to upload a completed spreadsheet or to add a member directly via data entry. For this example, let's select the hyperlink for Add a Partnership Member. On the next page, begin entering the information requested line by line. For this example, we'll select Tax Year 2018. We'll add the account type next. Please be advised that the account type for filing the retroactive SALT Parity Act election is based on the type of Colorado income tax return that the partner or member files. For any entity that files a DR-106 with the State of Colorado, please select Partnership for the account type. For our example, we'll choose Partnership from the drop-down menu for the account type. For business type in this example, we'll also choose Partnership from the drop-down menu. Next, we'll enter the member's name, select the ID type, F-E-I-N in this case. We will then enter their ID number. Next, we'll list their complete address. Please note that data validation does occur on Revenue Online for addresses within the United States. Some fields may no longer be required for addresses outside of the U.S. Then we scroll down to the next section. When selecting resident or non-resident, please make sure that the selection matches what was originally filed on the return. We know that many things may have changed since the original returns were filed, but this is another validation measure, so please choose what was included on your previously processed return. As you'll notice here, selecting resident does not require additional selections, but if the member is a non-resident, you will need to select their filing method from the previous return, whether that was composite, DR0107 included, or DR0108 filed. For our example, the member is a resident. For completing the section titled Partners or Shareholders Share of Income and Other Items, it may be helpful to complete a mock-up of a DR0106K using the current year's form but the information for the year in question. You can obtain most of the required information from the DR1715 partner or shareholder declaration for qualified business income deduction add back required for a retroactive SALT Parity Act election, which is available on the Colorado Department of Revenue's SALT Parity Act webpage, tax.colorado.gov forward slash SALT-Parity-Act-Election. 
You can also obtain this information from a federal K-1 for the member. In case you need it, there is also a link on this page to the complete instructions. Just scroll back to the top of the page and select Instructions. That link will pull up a PDF of the complete instructions for the Retroactive SALT Parity Act election. For our demonstration, we've gone ahead and entered our information into this example. Once our information is entered, we can select Add at the bottom of the page. Now we can see that we have our first member added. If you want to use the Manual Data Entry option, you would repeat that process until each member is added. Now, let's say that we want to use a spreadsheet upload. Please be advised that the spreadsheet will overwrite any information already entered into the system. So this member that we just added will go away and will be overwritten with information in the spreadsheet when we upload it. To upload a spreadsheet, we'll select the Upload option. We'll have a pop-up appear to allow us to choose which file to upload. Our folder options defaulted to the folder where we have the file saved. Once you have located your file, select it and then select Open. Once you see your file in the Import box, select OK. As we can see, our balance at the top has been updated for our pass-through entity. And if we scroll down, we see that each of our members' information has been imported. Again, anything we had manually entered previously has now been overwritten by the spreadsheet upload. However, we do see this little red exclamation point next to one of our members, and this means that we have an error or errors on this member's information, and we need to correct that information before proceeding. If you have a long list of members, you can select Show Errors in the top right of the Partnership Members list to see all of the member entries with errors. Then, to correct a member's information, click on the exclamation point. On the member's entry, the first thing we see is the year. In our spreadsheet, we had typed in 2020 by accident, but we are only filing a SALT Parity Act election for 2018 and 2019, so we have an error here. Going back to our information, we verified that the member was intending to file for 2019, but that was entered incorrectly on our spreadsheet. So, we'll correct the year to 2019. Then, as we scroll down, we see several other errors. The overall QBI add back cannot be negative and must be positive. Some items included here can be negative, while others can only be positive. For example, federal and Colorado subtractions must be negative but interest and dividends and royalties cannot be negative. Some, like net capital gain or loss, can be either depending on whether there was a gain, positive, or a loss, negative. This image shows an example of which items cannot be negative and which ones must be negative. Returning to our members' information, if we go through each of these errors line by line, we will see the specific error listed and we can adjust the entry appropriately.
Once you have corrected all the errors, you can select OK at the bottom of the screen to move forward. On the next page, we see that we have no errors remaining, so we can come back up and select Show All to return to our member list. Since we have no errors in the spreadsheet data remaining, we can select Next. At this point, the system will run some validation checks. And as we can see from this pop-up, we have some items that were not able to be validated in the system. We'll select OK on the pop-up, and then we'll go through again, member by member and line by line, to correct the errors. So we'll select the exclamation point next to our first member with an error. Scroll down, and we'll see that there aren't any errors in this data. It just couldn't be validated. So we'll select the checkbox next to the statement, I acknowledge that the information above for this partner or shareholder is correct. Then select OK to return. Our next error is due to the fact that an LLC typically does not file a corporate income tax return for the state of Colorado. If your LLC is structured and taxed as a corporation, please select Corporate Income Tax as the account type and select the business type based on the election chosen for the entity. If you are not sure which account and entity type should be reported for the partner or member, please contact the partner or member to verify how they have filed their income tax returns with the state of Colorado. In this example, this member needed to be a partnership, not a C corporation. So we just update the account type, scroll down to make sure there are no other errors, and then select OK. Back on the partnership members list, we can now select Next to move forward in the composite return. On the next page, we are asked if we would like to make the payment on behalf of the pass-through entity. If you select No, you will get a pop-up to verify and confirm that you do not want to make the payment at this time. The benefit to making the payment when filing the return is that the information is pre-populated into the payment, which reduces the risk of error. For our example, we do want to make our payment. So, instead of selecting Next to continue, we'll change our answer to Yes. We'll enter our bank account information And then here is where that pre-population occurred. The payment type and amount were imported from the information we just entered. If you are returning later to make the payment, you will need to make sure that the payment type you select is the retroactive SALT election payment. You will have these other options for payment types. And if you select any other option, your members and partners will not get their credit. Once we've entered our information, we'll select Next. On the summary screen, we can review our information, read each statement, and select each box to agree to the statements. When you select Submit, you will get a pop-up asking for your password. Your password acts as your electronic signature on the election, so we'll type in our password and then select OK. 
On the confirmation screen, we cannot emphasize this enough. Please keep this page. Print the page, take a screenshot of the page, print it and take a screenshot of it. Please keep a copy of this. You can also choose the printable view option to print a copy of the return you just filed. Once you select OK, you will be sent back to your main returns screen for your account. And as we can see here, our retroactive SALT Parity Act composite return is now pending. We can select View Request to view our return, but it is only pending at this point. Once the return and payment have posted to the account, we will then see Processing, as well as the option to View Request. If we select View Request while our return is in either Pending or Processing status, we will notice that neither has the option to amend the return, which can be seen in the top right of this page. We only have the options to print a copy of our return or to print payment coupon. By selecting the option to print payment coupon, a PDF will open of a tax payment voucher. You can print this voucher and mail it with your accompanying payment by check or money order to the address listed on the voucher itself. This option for printing the payment coupon or voucher is only available from the return screen after selecting View Request. If you want to make a payment by another means after filing your return, you can select the logo in the top left of the screen to return to your account homepage. From there, you can select Make a Payment. Please be advised that you must be logged in to have the option to make a retroactive SALT Parity election payment. There is a 30-day hold on these returns before they will be processed. But once that 30-day period has passed, if you select File or Amend and View Returns or Payments, you will now see that the return shows as Received, and you have the option to View or Amend the return. We have now filed our Combined Composite Retroactive SALT Parity Act election. Now that we have covered the Retroactive SALT Parity Act election, how does the SALT Parity Act apply to tax years 2022 through 2025? Effective tax year 2022, partnerships and S-corporations are required to provide Colorado K-1s or DR-0106K for each of their partners or shareholders for each tax year. This is a change from prior years when only Part 3 of the DR-0106 was required. Completed Colorado K-1s must be filed with the Colorado Department of Revenue and the partnership or S-corporation must provide a copy of the Colorado K-1 to each partner or shareholder reporting their income, deductions, modifications, and credits. These are due by April 15th or the 15th day of the fourth month after the close of the tax year for fiscal filers or after the automatic six-month extension if applicable. If the due date falls on a weekend or federal holiday, the Colorado K-1s will be due the next business day. As always, we will honor any federal disaster relief measures 
or extensions granted by the IRS. An explanation of the disaster relief or extension may be requested. If you have any questions, please reach out to our Taxpayer Services section. Colorado K-1s can be submitted to the department through two avenues, on Revenue Online or by mail. On Revenue Online, the options include Spreadsheet Upload, XML Upload, and Data Entry. The second avenue is by submitting the paper form DR-1706 by mail. For tax practitioners, the Colorado K-1 can be submitted by third-party access. Also, we are working on being able to receive the Colorado K-1s through other electronic filing methods. For 2023 forward, we hope to have additional options for the large firms filing large numbers of K-1s. This information and more can be found on our website under Filing Requirement Changes for Partnerships and S-Corporations, which can be found directly at tax.colorado.gov forward slash filing dash requirement dash changes dash four dash partnerships dash and dash s dash corporations. If you have questions about how the SALT Parity Act applies to a specific situation, we will be publishing more guidance and information as we have it available. We will have the following resources available for you. The Tax Education and Training Resources, which can be found at tax.colorado.gov forward slash education, the Department Publications and Guidance, which can be found at tax.colorado.gov forward slash guidance dash publications, the Taxpayer Hotline at 303-238-7378, but the most important site for SALT Parity Act information is the department's SALT Parity Act election website, which is tax.colorado.gov forward slash SALT dash parity dash act dash election. There are a wide variety of resources and tools that are available for you to use if you ever have questions. We have our websites, the Taxpayer Helpline. You can schedule an appointment with a tax examiner at one of our local offices, which are located in Colorado Springs, Denver Metro, Fort Collins, Grand Junction, and Pueblo. All of our local offices are open to the public via walk-in or by appointment, and each of our locations have drop-off boxes if you need to drop off a form. We also have the department's FYIs and guidance publications and our taxpayer email. Again, my name is Jane. I'd like to thank each of you for your kind attention and for taking time out of your day to join me for this SALT Parity Act webinar recording. I hope we helped put the SALT Parity Act puzzle pieces together for you and gave you a clearer picture of how to be voluntarily tax compliant. It was my pleasure to serve you. Have a great rest of your day.